Hi, in this lecture, I want to give a bit of a brief overview of this idea of aromaticity. Uh, it's a special name that is reserved for molecules that are have features about them that make them incredibly stable. The classic example is a benzene ring. And at first year level, we already sort of explained to you that benzene, although it looks like we draw these uh, single uh, double bonds and single bonds alternating. It looks like a highly conjugated system. Uh, the reality is that the molecule in terms of its orbitals does not look anything like that. Uh, all the textbooks uh, used to write benzene looking something like this. They drew a circle to sort of indicate that um, it's not just alternating double and single bonds, but that they're all together. Now, there are very good reasons why drawing it out like this actually looks a lot neater, and certainly for reactions becomes a lot easier. So we don't see this in, uh, in the literature. Um, but there is something that uh, about this term aromaticity uh, that causes molecules to be a lot more stable, and therefore their reactions are quite different from a standard molecule. This for instance, you've already learned, is that a benzene ring is not a carbon-carbon double bond that can react in the same way as other alkenes. Um, so there's a lot that can be said, but actually at the heart of it, there's just a few uh, simple rules that we need to learn to identify something that is aromatic, uh, like a benzene ring. So obviously recognizing a structure like that is very easy, um, but the rules um, are named after the person who developed them, and the guy's name was Huckel, and these are referred to as Huckel's rules. Um, so I wouldn't expect you to know the name, per se, I want to ask you that, but I do expect you to know the rules. Um, and the rules for, for aromaticity, there are three of them. The first thing is that aromatic molecules must be planar. <clears throat> All right, they must be planar, and they, um, so a benzene ring, for instance, is sp2, 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 sp2. These are all trigonal planar uh, atoms, and so this whole molecule is completely flat. So uh, benzene satisfies that. It needs to be completely planar. Uh, the second rule is that um, uh, it must be a cyclic system as well. So it must be planar and it must be cyclic. And of course, benzene, we can see, is a cyclic molecule. So that's fine. Um, <clears throat> and then the last rule is a little bit of a formula. Um, and it's you know, some people get a little bit uh, confused by the formula. It's really, really very, very simple. Um, Huckel's rule says that the system must have 4n plus 2 uh, pi electrons. Now, this is actually a whole lot simpler than uh, one might think. N is a natural or normal number. In other words, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Um, in practice, the things that we're going to be looking at are mostly examples where N is either 1 or 2. In other words, if N is 1, we're going to get 4 times 1. is 4 plus 2. We need 6 pi electrons. So 6 is one of the numbers that satisfies this formula. Um, if n is 2, it's going to be, the next sequence is going to be 10. If n is 3, it's going to be 12, it's going to be 14. Um, I don't work with anything much more between these two values over there, all right? So, uh, but this formula is important because it does satisfy. So, benzene, we can see, if we look at this, in terms of the pi electron, the electrons involved in this planar system, it's planar, it's cyclic, we have two electrons in this pi bond, two electrons in this pi bond, two electrons in this pi bond, there are six pi electrons in this, and it satisfies Huckel's rule, and so therefore must be aromatic. So let's look at, uh, at a, the first molecule and decide whether or not it's aromatic. So this is an example. So this one is a uh, it's an uh, octane or octene tetraene in cyclic. It is planar. Uh, it is cyclic. Uh, all of those seem to set the, the rules. But if you count up the number of electrons over here, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This one cannot be aromatic. 
Okay, um, let's look at probably one of the hardest examples that you will see, uh, and that is an example where we have a heteroatom over here, and I'm going to put in a nitrogen. So this molecule over here, its name is Pearl, uh, and it is um, also a molecule which we need to test whether it is aromatic or not. And, and this one is going to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, and the reason being is that you have to uh, take on your information on the knowledge you have of resonance. So, is it planar? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five in a ring. These are all uh, sp2 hybridized, and so this whole thing is actually planar. Uh, is it cyclic? Yes, it fits that. Does it have at least six pi electrons? Now, when you count it up, you're going to count one, two there, three, four. You're going to get to the number four, and you're going to stop and you say, okay, this is not aromatic. But there is a lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen. <clears throat> and that lone pair of electrons is sitting either above or below the plane of this molecule. And in fact, they can be involved in resonance and can push in, and we can actually draw a negative charge on this carbon over there, they can delocalize. In fact, those two electrons are part of the whole pi system. Okay? Um, and that means that the number of electrons that are part of this system over here is actually six. And this molecule is an example of an aromatic system. Okay? So that is why this term aromaticity is not as simple as just looking at a benzene. That's easy to see, and you're going to see lots of examples, and it's going to be obvious. Um, but other systems are aromatic, and this is an example of one as well. Um, another system, which is also aromatic, uh, and quite an important example, so cyclopentadiene, cyclopentadiene, all right, there's five of them, it's a diene, it's a very common molecule, but it's actually very, very easy to deprotonate this hydrogen, one of those hydrogens are there, there are two of them, it's very easy to deprotonate, and the reason being is if we deprotonate it, we get a negative charge on that, and that negative charge can delocalize, and so it can be spread over the entire molecule, but what's more important, why it's even more than just a resonance stabilization, is that this molecule is both planar, it is also cyclic, and it also has six pi electrons. One, two, three, four, and five, six from this negative charge that's on it over there. And cyclopentadiene, uh, or the, the anion of that, cyclopentadiene R anion, is also an aromatic and it's often sometimes drawn like this it's as that circle to show it's aromatic and it's overall there's a negative charge on it it's actually very stable and an important ligand in organ uh, inorganic chemistry okay so those are the rules of aromaticity it is actually a lot simpler than uh, you might think and I think when we do some examples in class you'll see just how easy it is